morning, everyone. It is a great, great summer, sunny day here in Dallas, Texas, and um, we've had some crazy weather, lots of rain, lots of um, storms, hail, (laughs) a few tornadoes. That's what you get here uh, in this region. Hope everybody's had a wonderful week so far. So we're waiting for Terry um, Rashner to join us. Um, I'm Rothlin Booker. I am a real estate broker and owner here in Dallas, Texas. And um, I'm a member of NAWRB. I know that's a mouthful, but that is a National Association of Women in Real Estate Businesses, actually a board member and a certified delegate spokeswoman. I am so honored to be here with you today and to be interviewed by Terry and talk to you a little bit about my journey and uh, basically knocking the T off of Kent, knocking the T off of Kent, removing every limitation that prohibits us from achieving our goals and our dreams. And by doing that, we have to live in the I can consciousness, the I can consciousness. And that's a mouthful in itself because, you know, when we think about being conscious uh, or unconscious, that is, um, we'd have to know that there is a big, big difference. So if we're conscious, awakened, that is, that means at some point we were asleep. So today... It's going to be all about awakening, awakening, awakening our souls, awakening our minds, awakening our hearts to achieve our dreams. We're going to uh, walk in authority. That sounds with confidence. Really wonderful. Uh huh. Yeah. It sounds really, really wonderful. I just want to see if this is Terry really fast. Terry, are you there? I I've been here about till twenty five after eight. So can you hear me? Yeah. I wow. can't hear you. Okay, yes, good. the problem was is that was that no one had your actual number. So when I was searching for the different numbers, that one wasn't oh, okay. coming up. So um, <laughs> okay, good. I tried to just I just decided to try something random. So you guys are both okay. Yeah, I we're, apologize for the hey, we're, hey, Roz. There. Good morning, everybody. This is Terry Rasner, and I get to interview Roz hey. today. And I just listened to her, and she didn't know, and she did an absolute fabulous job. So I am so excited and so <laughs> privileged to be on this She Call today, and welcome, everyone. And I'll tell you, Roz is, like, absolutely the most passionate person. And um, (laughs) what I did is, if you guys don't know Roz, um, I met her last year at the conference, and then what I did was um, I went to her website and entered her world in Allen, Texas, and before this interview. And, my gosh, it was an excellent website. And, Roz, I just cannot believe the things that people say about you. It's just so wonderful. So, Roz, I want you to get started. I know that you just did that, and I know that we're doing living in the I consciousness and knocking off the T off of can't, and I love this, yes. this basic message. We know it's really a simple message, but it's really profound, just simply knocking yes. the T off of can't and all the can'ts in our lives. So let's get started with some examples of your life as a real estate broker in Allen, Texas. And um, the best way for me to... Um, really start talking about this is can you I know that we just had you do all that but can you just say that over again so if anyone was not on the call they can really hear about all about Roz simply what is about Roz well let me start from the beginning okay I have a lot of titles but at the end of the day I really am a super human being (laughs) Um, I'm Roz Booker principal broker and owner of Arbrook Realty in Allen, Texas. We're a full-service real estate company, and we're here to meet all of our clients' real estate needs, buyers, sellers alike. So um, I'm actually a nana. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. We have four beautiful children, um, two grandchildren aged 10 and 6. They keep us very, very busy. Uh, Worship leader at River of Glory, um, actually, women's leader at River, uh, River of Glory. So I wear a lot of different hats. So that's just a little bit about 
who I am. Um, having came from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in my early 20s, I ventured here, and this is, a, this is a, a story of knocking the tea off of Kent. I'm not from Texas. I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So it was July 4th of actually 1988 we visited here, and that was my first husband, and fell in love, just fell in love with Texas, the ambience, and this may seem a little shallow, but it's my story. I started looking at all the big buildings, rode downtown near the gallery, and I kind of had an aha moment. And I said, you know what? Mm. I said, I think I can work here and I can live here. I could see myself sitting in one of those chairs in a, in a high rise in an office and just gleaning mm. out the window. So I went back after we visited that weekend, went back to my job, which is at that time was Liberty National Bank, which is now Chase. And I started putting in job. Uh, applications uh, over the phone, online, and even in the mail, and got an interview, got an interview with a property management, cash management department, and at that time, I had a 72 Chevy Nova. It was metallic <laughs> blue with a with a, a white hard top, and uh, I had two small children. I drove down. I took a half a day off work, drove down in a rainstorm, had a flat. My hair was in a fro by the time I got to the interview <laughs> over an hour late. I know, right? And the lady oh. still hired me. She hired me, and I said, well, can I get two weeks' notice? She's like, well, there's someone who could start today. Um, I said, don't worry about it. Can you give me one week? We moved and packed up and moved to Beverly, so to speak. So <laughs> that's uh, how my career and journey from Oklahoma to Texas began. Were you licensed in uh, Oklahoma as no, a real estate actually, agent? My, no, no, ma'am. Actually, I was in banking in Oklahoma, and mm -hmm. it wasn't until I came to Texas uh, after I had a corporate career um, with a Fortune 500 company retailer that, you know, I ventured into real estate. I was actually at the, the pinnacle of my career at this company, you know, having started in a created administrative position. You had a young girl in her 20s, moved here with her first husband, got a job basically at a Fortune 500 company, in a creative position, started off at basically just above minimum wage at that time. I didn't have a formal degree, meaning a, a, an education. Um, and it was amazing what happened. It was amazing what happened. I had a, a, a very, very nice, hard but fair boss. Never will forget her. I will mention her name. Marisha Konkowski is engraved in my heart. She took such an interest in me, and I've really been blessed to have people mentor me along the way and see the goal and help dig that out. And so she made sure that I was in every company um, class that, I, that was offered by the company, Toastmasters, and for my birthday one year, she brought me a thesaurus and a dictionary, so I think she was trying to tell me something. But nevertheless, she groomed me. She groomed me for a management position, and one of the last positions I held in this company was minority and women-owned supplier development. And I never will forget another person. I'll mention her name, Patricia Asup. She is the lady who gave me a start in a management position. You had a, a, a woman who had no formal education, two small children, and by this time, having attained this position, I had become a single mom. I had gotten a divorce. The first marriage didn't work. I decided I was going to stay. I wasn't going to go back to Oklahoma. I left that behind. And so I asked Miss Asip after she had interviewed people with degrees, people who were more um, educated than me, more experienced. I say, hey, why? Why, Miss Patricia, why did you hire me? And she said, you know what? She said, Roz, because you were poised. And she said, mm. because you were teachable. Now, Terry, I want you to know that word teachable, 
I have held it close and dear to my heart, and I've made sure I've watered that seed in every realm, in every dimension that I have walked in my life to remain teachable. I don't care who you know or what you know. It's a key. I love that, and and I think that's true. Um, you know, I took a class um, years ago on mil- the millionaire mindset, and when I was listening to you talk, one thing that kept coming to my mind was a definition of someone, they're called a mentor seeker, and that's exactly what mm. you're describing. You look for those people that know more than you because you're humble, you're teachable, and you seek them out. And that can be in groups, mastermind groups, and mentors in your area, as well as NARAB, what we're doing all together as women. We're, we're, wow. You know, Desiree has put this together for us, and, and um, each of us, you know, women, women aren't raised to, you know, pat each other on the, on, on the baseball, uh, right, on the baseball field or on the basketball court. <laughs> good job, good job. Right. Women were raised to be yeah. catty and combative and kind of, you know, oh, no, you know, stay away from that person, <laughs> this and that. But, you know, this organization, us, what we're doing is we're doing that. We're all mentor seekers. We're lifting each other up when we need to. We're helping each other. And I'll tell you that your story is just really profound, and I love that. But, you know, you are a mentor seeker, and that is a millionaire mindset. That's great. Great. Awesome. So yeah. let me ask you, um, i got a couple other things I want to ask you um, so when I was looking at your website, I was just everywhere, really, truly, people love you. I mean, when I talked to you, I just, I fell in love with you. You know, you're just like so <laughs> loving and kind and, and oh, passionate. So you, and Carrie. people can relate to that, right? People, li- people yes. like like-minded people. So um, you're easy to talk to. You're, you're, you are teachable. You're kind. And I love all those traits, respectful and honorable. And, you know, the world's missing those things. You know, people don't want to mm-hmm. sit down and really get to know people. And you do that. You sit down and you want yes. to build relationships. Um, so yes. I just saw that all over in your website about what people say about you. And, and I've heard Desiree talk highly of you all the time. I just love that. So what are some of the traits people value the most in you? I, I want you to really tell me, you know, you told me one about your teachable, but what, do you see any differences between men and women um, when you speak to them or how you handle them? Um, you know what? It, it, definitely in wisdom I may change my approach with a man uh, for obvious reasons. But for the most part, the foundation of what I really think people love is the authenticity, Mm -hmm. Um, being genuine to help them understand that I'm not just going to be a transaction coordinator, a one deal hit, and then you're gone from my life. I really help people birth their dreams and build legacies. And that's my tagline. And, um, I build lifetime relationships with them. I mean, there are some people after 20 years of being in real estate, you know, they're buying their second and third homes. And I just really make it a point to nurture my sphere of influence and help them understand I care about them as a person. Um, You know, we do life together, so to speak. And the expectation Mm -hmm. is, I'm going to be their real estate professional for life. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we miss a few and people have family or other means that, you know, where they may use someone else. But um, pretty much people do business with those that they know, they like, and they trust. People, they really trust me. I've, I've said often that, my goodness, our jobs are so underrated because, you know, I've been the babysitter, um, you know, I even helped someone recently with it for an extended family get a job, you know, that's not related to real estate, so to speak, but the relationship goes so much further than the transaction. I love that. You know, you also yes. sound like a, a, you're a charger. You know, there's a difference between a person who just lives and a person that's a charger, and you're a charger. You know, I love this, this quote that I, I saw one time, and I, it always sticks with me. The power plant does not have energy. It generates energy. And you are a power plant. You generate the energy. You don't sit back 
and expect that power plant to have the energy, it generates the energy, right? That's what you're doing. You're charging through life. You're making things happen. You're not sitting back waiting for someone to drop something on your lap. You're getting engaged. You're charging. And that's what successful people do that, you know, think at a high functional level. They they have these yeah. these traits and that's exactly what you're right. doing. You're future oriented, you know, and and you've got these grand visions and ambitions and you're telling us about them. And you're a challenge seeker, and you are deeply interested and in, authentically you're connecting with others. And I love that. I really love that. Yeah. And that brings me to another question I want to ask you. Do you think that really truly helps you when you're dealing like when something goes goes awry, like something doesn't work out? Um, with a client or a situation, do you think that authenticity really helps you for that person to go, you know what, I get it, you tried, you did everything? Do you think that works well, you know because what? of that relationship? It, it does work because of the relationship. But, you know, Terry, more important, and I am going to bring this up because it is the foundation on which I've built everything in my life. I have a relationship with God. Amen. And I live by I live by faith, and I can't hide that, and I won't ever leave that out. And there is something about the anointing that shatters everything Mm -hmm. that seems pressing and hard. You know, even in a work situation, my job is to bring calm. My job is to get my clients to closing in one piece, you know, not divorce, you know, Mm -hmm. in, in their right mind and happy about using me again. So even when things happen that spiral out of my control, what I hope I bring is what exudes from me in my own life, and that's peace, and that's faith, and that's hope, and that's love, and that's transcending. It is. It is very transcending. I love your transparency. You know, it sounds like, you really are a, a meaning maker. You really make <laughs> purposely, you purposely create meaningful moments for people in everything you do. And you did that yesterday when we talked. You know, we took it to the next level. It wasn't about, you know, just a conversation. You and I bonded and took it to the next level and connected. That's oh, yeah. what you do. You know, people oh, yeah. appreciate that. They appreciate the big picture. You know, you're spent, you spend the time to strive to really achieve these these relationships and these goals and these ties. And I truly believe people who do that really, truly live a full, passionate, and a life full of purpose. And your life right. sounds just you like know, that. I love that. <laughs> well, you know, as we'll go back just a little bit. Um, for years I've tried to put me in a title or a box. And it, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to take the limits because – Titles, Of course, they explain what my authority is and what realm I'm working in, but they somewhat put us in a box. I named a whole bunch of titles in the beginning of this conversation as Mm -hmm. to who I was. But if I were to really sum up in every platform, realm, and dimension of my life, from work, life, career, you know, ministry, et cetera, I am a midwife. And what does a midwife do? My tagline is birth of dreams, build legacies. So when people have something inside of them, and we'll say a seed, if they have something they want to achieve, let's go to real estate, American dream. People want to achieve the American dream. They want to purchase their first, second, third, fourth home, guest home, et cetera. Well, my job is to tap in to their dream, and, hey, when we get to – five centimeters for those of us who've had children and we go into labor, you get to six centimeters, seven, (laughs) eight. I mean, you get into that progressive labor where things are going haywire. Okay. Now that those are the chaotic moments where things are going wrong. Well, we still have to have someone there to keep us centered, to keep us focused on the goal. And I really believe strategically that's who I am. My job is to make sure we have that baby and that that baby gets here safely. That that's absolutely just a great yeah. analogy. I love that. I really do. Yeah. Um, let me let me ask you this. Um, how would you define the key characteristics of having? You know, what would you feel like? You and I kind of talked about. 
yesterday a little bit because I really wanted to talk to you about this because you said some pretty profound things to me about, you know, your you talked about your, um, you know, the can and the sleep and all that stuff on on these traits. Yeah. Um, can you can kind of define that with us a little bit? I think the the audience really needs to hear about that. I think it was pretty profound. Your definitions okay. of can and well, will, and I love that. Okay. In this segment, Ready, Set, Grow, I know it sounds kind of athletic. I've been athletic most of my life. So Ready, Set, Grow is symbolic of Ready, Set, What? Clap. Let's go. Let's get after it. <laughs> let's go. So, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. So the the sub theme to that or subtitle is Living in the I can consciousness, I can consciousness. When we live in the I can consciousness, we are going to be able to knock the T off of can't. Mm. So in order to get to that point, I really wanted to dig into the definitions of can, will, conscious or consciousness, and being asleep. So can means that we're strong. I can. Can means that we have power. I can. Can means that we have the strength and that we're able. So when we say the words I can based on those definitions, it has a new meaning. Now, will, W-I-L-L, that's our determination. That's our purpose. That's our desires. It's a choice. So when We say, I will. You're saying, I'm determined. I'm purposed. I have desires. And I choose to win on this day. And conscious or consciousness. Basically, Terry, that just means that we are awake. We're aware. And why do I say conscious? Because if we're conscious and we're conscious that we're conscious, we're aware that we're conscious, that may have meant at some point in time we have been in in an oblivion or maybe even been asleep. And that means to be in a state of slumber. So I can, in living in the I can consciousness, We need to understand that we're strong, we're powerful, we have the strength, and we're able to do the very thing that we've been purposed to do, women, men alike. um, What is it that you want to do in your life? You know, I I have a a segment called Ask Roz B, and I know I teetered the line with this because Ask Roz B, yes, it's, it's definitely for my real estate clients, but it's, it goes beyond real estate. And that is really what I am so applauding NAWRB about is that even though our mission may be bottom line, we get to be our authentic self and help basically champion women, you, me, other women who have like desires, we get to champion them in our own voice. So I'm going to go back to I can, I will, and um, the consciousness state. So, mm-hmm. and I was talking about that relating to Ask Roz B. I had created a platform on YouTube where people could just come and be inspired. We need a mentor group. We need to be rallied. We need cheerleaders sometimes. And Sometimes, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, we can't get that in our immediate circles. And sometimes we just don't have the time to network. So, you know, I said, you know what, I'm just going to bring this to the world. I'm just going to bring it to the the Internet world. I'm going to, you know, for those who want to, yeah, those who want to chime in, hey, it doesn't have to be about buying or selling a home. Here you have a lady. Yeah, I'm a real estate professional, but I'm a champion for you. You know, I'm I'm your biggest cheerleader. I want to find the goal in you and and that was that's what makes me rich is finding the gold in others. So I'm sorry if I've teetered off. <laughs> no, I absolutely I it's good. I that's that's why we're on this call is to hear that, um about yeah. that, your the conscience level. And and I to go back to that, I think you're exactly right. I, 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 an example for me that drives me absolutely crazy, and I think Desiree and a lot of you have been with me and I've done this to you, you'll know exactly, oh, that's a Terry moment. Because if, I'm, if someone's with me, they better darn well be with me. 
They better be focusing on our conversation, and they better not be texting and answering the phone. Not unless it's an emergency. I get that. I will say that's fine. But when my nieces and nephews come to my house or I go to lunch with someone, because my time is so valuable, I have no time. But if I take the time to consciously be with that person, I'm going to give that person 110%. And you know what? We don't do that anymore with people. We disrespect them. We dishonor them. Why am I here with this person when they're not even – they're they're on their phone or they're texting or they're, you know, the kids are like, I, I can't, it drives me crazy. I know the audience out there and Roz, we experience that all the time and that's not consciously living. They're not in the moment. They're not in the moment exactly. focusing on that person. And you know what? They miss out because they're not listening to really what that person is saying. This, that, that's right. That forces you to listen to that person. And that person You're is right. a gold mine. I have to tell you a story, a quick story. I was at a, I was at another conference speaking. I was at another conference speaking. Uh, Over 400 people were at this conference, and I was one of the panel speakers. And I waited. I sat at the table with the other speaker and all these people there. And no one talked to me. No one talked to me. Everybody was on this other guy because this guy was so awesome. He was such a big, big rock star. (laughs) But you know what? It, it was a, it was a, it was a what you said a label. And so when I got up to speak, the, 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 one of the, uh, the vice president CEO of Quicken Loans was sitting next to me. He had an entire hour and a half to talk to me at my table, and he never talked to me once. When I got up to speak about my story and my book and everything, he, he couldn't get fast enough to ask me for his, the owner to come, uh, would be flying in from um, San Diego because he was in San Diego at the time, this other, his boss the CEO of Quicken Loans, wanted to take me to dinner, and I said, I have no time. I have no time. You had an wow. hour and a half to talk to me, and you didn't ask me or say one word to me. So that's what we're missing out on. And, and Roz is right. There are golden nuggets in every person, but we judge everyone because of the way they look, what they say, or what we think we heard, gossip, or they really don't know the story. Nobody walks in anyone's shoes on this call. Nobody knows what each person Absolutely. goes through. That's why we have to Absolutely. embrace them. That's why we are in NARAB, because Desiree accepts all of us. She loves us. She gets us. Yes. That's what makes yes. it work. And, Absolutely. Roz, I love hearing your stories about conscious living and <laughs> you can and can't do, because yes. really that's what it's all about, Right. It is. And you, that is. It is. And, Carrie, two words that came to mind is living intentional and Correct. living on purpose. You know, and we have to tap into that and, and be um, an owner of those intentions and, and own it. So I want to bridge from my Fortune 500 retail career to how I bridged and got into real estate. So... One day I was challenged in corporate America. I had a sick child and had to miss an important, very important meeting. When I got back to work um, that following day, my uh, manager said, look, when we have important meetings like this, you need to find other means for your sick kids. Well, that kind of struck a chord chord in me. And uh, little did he know at that time I had already – uh, position myself um, with real estate classes, et cetera. I had met a couple at our church, and they were in the mortgage and real estate industry, and I was already on board with them. So I told him, I said, you know what, you're right, and I did. I gave my two weeks' notice, and that is when I began to own my own dream, and I jumped off the cliff, Terry. I said, you know Love what? It. There, there are no chains that are going to be able to hold me here. And obviously, at this point, corporate America didn't value what I valued the most. I needed flexibility. I wanted to be a mommy again. I had went through mm-hmm. some hurtful situations. I had gotten a divorce. I was about to be married again to my husband today of 20 years, and he is so wonderful. And we actually met at this company. Um, mm-hmm. And I, if I was going to you know, work that many hours for corporate America, I wanted to be able to realize and perceive and and earn a really healthy living. Plus, I wanted to create more choices for my family. Again, I didn't have a formal degree, and I wanted to go back to school, Terry. So there I went. There I went. And 20 years later, I'm still here. And uh, this past October, 
I said, you know what, I've birthed hundreds and hundreds of people's dreams in home ownership. It's mm. about time that I own my own dream, and it's about time that I start my own company, and that's exactly what I did. Love it. Great story. It's just such a great story. I'm sure that everybody else is thinking the exact same thing. They're, they're clapping behind the scenes for you because it's just a very <laughs> inspirational story. I just I love it. You know, and one thing I wanted to go back to, too, was when you were talking about the consciously living, it, it's when we live this supercharged life, like women that we're doing, we're taking on all these other roles, we're doing all these things, and you said you're superhuman, yeah. and you, you really are. But, you know, to go with that, too, and people forget about this stuff. I know Desiree has hit on it, too, and we all deal with it personally in our lives, but if we're not getting enough sleep, we're not taking care of our bodies, we're not eating properly. I mean, you don't feed a racehorse junk, right? Right? Right. So us right. women, we just don't take the time for ourselves and, and to live the supercharged life that we need to do and be a part of Engage because we're all exhausted, is maybe we should reflect back and go, you know what, maybe I should take some more time for ourselves and stuff. So tell me what you do like to because you are superhuman woman here, okay? Superpower yes. girl, I'm calling you. So how do you do uh-huh. that so that you can live in that, that constant state of consciousness? Because that takes a lot of energy, too. Man, so tell I'm us what you, you do. How do you take care of yourself? Terry, that's an everyday practice. Otherwise, we'll let the day run off with us and not mm-hmm. take care of us. So first and foremost, we have to give ourselves permission. That's a huge word. It, we have to give ourselves permission to take time for ourselves. We have Love to it. schedule us in our day, and Love we it. have to understand that even when we're not celebrated on the outside, that we need to learn how to celebrate ourselves without guilt. So for me, I may duck off to a day in the spa and spend six to eight hours For me, um, window shopping, I don't do a lot of mall shopping, but window shopping is therapeutic for me. I may jump out and pull my um, chucks out from the past and get on the basketball court. I used to coach girls basketball. I've played uh, girls basketball. And I do make it an intentional habit to two to three times a week. I'm either doing hip pyramid workouts, um, either on the treadmill, um, j- uh, jump roping, uh, doing resistance bands. I, I find that I don't need a psychiatrist in, in my whirlwind. I just need to exercise sometimes <laughs> and get those endorphins moving. And a lot of times we get up and say, oh, I'll do it later, and later never happens. Oh, and then there's one day, then there's two days, and there's three days. And by the end of the week, sometimes we're so stressed out and don't, fit, don't understand why. Well, we didn't schedule us in our day. You know, it, that's interesting you'd say that. I remember um, reading, and I don't know where I read it, but it always stuck with me, and I've, I kind of talk about it sometimes. And it's true, if you, don't schedule, if you don't schedule pleasure into your life, guarantee me the pain will be there, right? The suffering pain yeah. is going to come. But so you've got to schedule time for yourself. I love that. I think that's a good <laughs> piece of wisdom for all of us women. And I, yes. it, it's pretty exciting about that. So let's talk about um, a little bit about, you, so you had your awakening moment. You talked about that when you, you know, you came into Texas and, and you're like, yeah, it's raining. I can think I can do this. And um, what, tell us a little bit more about that. Like, how does that experience happen to you now? I mean, you had it back then. So let's bring you present. How do you know when you have these awakening moments? Like, how do you know to go do that? How did you know to join NARAB? How did you know to, you know, pick up the phone and call me? I mean, do you, get, do you live out? It sounds like you totally, you're a supercharger. Trust me, there's seven traits of that. But, <laughs> but you live outside of your box. You don't let anyone put you in a box. Mm. You talked about that. So tell Ooh. us how do you, what's that gut feeling? Let us all put that inside secret to us women so we can trust our gut more like you do. Tell us how those those moments come to you. Well, again, we don't just arrive, Terry, and I think it's important for us to know. What I mean is just because we achieve one milestone, we have not made it because, to be honest with you, 
we should never let anyone put a ceiling in our sky. And for me, that's kind of what I had done. I had been used to birthing everyone else's dreams. Now, I'd have my moments, obviously, where I would hit some milestones. But to a degree where I am living now, I have to stay, and I'll go back to it, in that state of awareness and tap into the freedom and all of the gifts that may be unopened. So I talked a lot about titles and how they box you in. Well, staying in one rut or position in life the rest of your life, you don't get to realize the other unopened gifts and the nuggets that are on the inside of you. And to not be able to look to the outside to say, okay, uh, is that good enough? Am I good enough? You know, Again, I go back to permissions. I stop asking for permissions to, to be great. Just do it like Nike and hold nothing back because, Terry, here is an important key. We give others the permission to be great and achieve their dreams when we've done so. So I think the greatest mm-hmm. example we can show someone is not necessarily what we say to them but how we live, you know, You know, communication Mm -hmm. is not just uh, verbal. It's not just written. It's seen. So Mm -hmm. talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. We got to put the money where the mouth is and do it. And, again, just to keep validating the truth about us. What is the truth about you? What do Mm -hmm. you want? Ask yourself all of that. You know, every time you get up, okay, what, what are my goals today? Oh, in the next one year, two years, three years, five years, it's okay to set goals because if we don't have a goal, we can't score. And I think sometimes the world just kind of um, drags us along when we don't have goals articulated. I have affirmations everywhere. So I get up, and if I'm having a bad day, I know I sound like a wind-up doll. That's just my nature. But I do have some down times, and I have some times where I really have to press into the wind. But I have affirmations everywhere. They're plastered. I have scriptures everywhere. Mm -hmm. I actually still believe in a vision board. I have two Mm -hmm. vision boards that I'm looking at right now. And these are vision boards about where I want to go, what I want to do, you know, how I want to feel. What I want it, to be when I, I grow up. I'm, I'm glad you're doing that because, you know, vision boards got a big, uh, like, oh, gosh, everybody does them. You know, I went, to a, I went to a class, and they were doing them, and half the class of the millennials left and go, this is so ridiculous. This is so out of date. But you know what? It's not because in Habakkuk 2.2 it says, write it down on the tablets because <laughs> if you don't write it down, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Terry. And people need to be accountable, and the only person that's truly going to hold you accountable Come is yourself. On. Right. All so, right, girl. You know, and and I'll tell you another thing too that I was thinking of when you were talking about that. Eleanor Roosevelt once said that, and I love I love Eleanor Roosevelt. I truly I've got lots of people I love, but I really love Eleanor Roosevelt because, you know, she I, I read this whole study, and the biggest fear people have is of is rejection. Truly, it's the biggest fear mm. is rejection. And so, she said one time she said she was talking to someone, and she said that. Um, People are so full of themselves, so self-absorbed that if they realized that people really don't even aren't even talking about them, they think they're so important <laughs> that they think all these people are talking about them. They're really not. I'm paraphrasing what she said. You're right. But you know what? Yeah. When you put that into perspective and realize, people aren't think they they don't think about you very often. They they don't. They're not we, on their radar we, every day. We but think we they think. Do. Right. Yeah, because of we feel rejected. You know, we feel like that we're on their radar, you know, oh, that, that doesn't happen. So people out there just don't even think that anymore. And, you know, I love that about what she said. I love what you say about goals. I love the, the, the board, the affirmations. That's what we all need to be doing. And, you know, you guys out there, this stuff that she's saying, this is good stuff. These are, these are priceless mm-hmm. pieces of wisdom that Roz is sharing with us because it's a lot like it parallels my life, what I do. Um, we just kind Absolutely. of say it a different way, but it's the same thing. Exactly. And, right. You know, another thing I just want to share really quick is, and I share this too, is that what she's saying, I want, Roz is saying this to you guys, and I'm going to say it a little bit a different way, but Roz is, it, Roz sure. is exactly right what she's saying. 
You know, according to Bonnie Ware, she was a hospice nurse and, and an author, and she specialized with individuals in their last days of life. And she said the two top regrets that dying had were, I wish I had the courage to live a true life to myself. Isn't that what Roz is teaching us today? That's exactly. The number, the number one regret is what Roz is saying. People don't want to live. They don't live. They wish they have regrets. I wish I would have lived the true to myself. Roz is doing that. She's showing us what she's doing. And the second regret was they wish they had spent less time working and more time with their family. Did Roz not say that too? That's why Roz left and jumped to the next level because it was over for her. She's been true to herself. So if Roz is on her deathbed, you guys, everyone out there listening to this, Roz has done what she didn't want to be a regret, the two top ones that Bonnie Ware had said. And let me tell you right now, have you ever seen a U-Haul behind a hearse? Huh? Has anyone? <laughs> right? You can't take Ooh, it with that's you. Good so right there. What Roz is saying, you guys, you guys better be focusing on the relationships, making living consciously aware, and knocking out the, mm. the really truly knocking out the tea out of Ooh. off of you know can't because Roz is living yeah. this stuff, you guys. I love it, Roz. You're my hero. Thank you. I love what you're doing. Oh, we are we are our heroes. <laughs> our sheroes. <laughs> yes, sheroes. I love that. That is so good. <laughs> so I love that you're true to yourself. I, I just love that. I love that you're you 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 are you activate your awareness of the power you possess. Your self appreciation, you've talked about that a lot. Um yeah. I love that you have the vision. What you want to do, where you're going, and you're staying focused. I love that you're just sharing this stuff with you. I love that you build and leverage relationships. You have advisors, mentors, and sponsors, and you've talked about that. The mastermind groups, the dream teams, NARAB, that's why we're all together and we're sharing this stuff and and helping other women, right? Yes. What I want you to talk a little bit about, because you're so inspiring. I feel so inspired, you know. we We all need to be inspired all the time, every moment. And 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 we don't know everything. And when we hit, sit and talk to people, we learn so much from them. And I'm just learning so much for, from you. And and it's affirmation, confirmation to me. Terry, you stay on the right track. You know, when we talk and we share this stuff. Mm-hmm. But I want you right. to talk a little bit about me. About your you, you you know, we talked about that moment. You know, that awakening moment. But taking risks. You know, talk to me about taking risks. Let's talk about that. Faith over fear. How, how do you do all that? Give us that insight. Goodness. I tell you, you know, God God never said that our knees wouldn't tremble when he asked <laughs> us one. to just come and walk. You know, mm-hmm. it takes not just faith. It takes courage to be. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about a lot of, doing but Terry we're we should focus on being and being comes from the inside out because a lot of time we get it flip-flopped we think in our doing we then become established to become something or somebody you have arrived well that's basically the world's equation of success. When we know exactly who we are and where we're destined to go, we just have to, even when our knees are clanking, just go, (laughs) just do it, just jump. Because if it's in God's will, we're going to fall in him. And what a great place to fall <laughs> in him. Oh, I love if it. He catches, yeah, if he catches us in the net, that's a great place to be. So we have to consider shifting our thinking and our mindsets. You know, shifting our thinking and mindsets. You know, a lot of times people won't try again. They won't try it again because Mm -hmm. maybe they've been badgered, they've been condemned, or they've gone bankrupt. And I've gone bankrupt too, Terry. Mm -hmm. But I crawl back up. I put those bootstraps on, and I pulled them up again, and I said, let's do it again. You know, 2007, 8 happened, and my whole family went bankrupt. We almost lost everything except the house we live in. And when God challenged me on 
going back out into the industry uh, in real estate. I said, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? He's like, you know what? I want you to go back at that point where you were terrorized. Yep, he does, that, doesn't he? That's something to yes. I'm like, so you you don't want me to have it all together in the bank account full again before I try again? He said, no. You need to go back at this point because I want to build something in you. I want to show you who I am. So I left corporate America a second time. I didn't get to talk about that, but I had to go back up back back to work after we filed bankruptcy, but I kept my accreditations current. It was still in the real estate industry, but commercial real estate property management. And so I, I left. I, I left again and went back out and I'll fast forward just a little bit. You know, it wasn't but three, four years ago where I was challenged again. So to think that we're going to soar without challenges is a fallacy. We just have to navigate through the challenges and keep an upward motion, the upward bound. So I was challenged three years ago, had all this great training, wonderful training, and, you know, had hit a lull in the real estate industry again, even after, even after going back a second time. And you know, I was challenged. I was like, well, I don't have postage money. I don't have money for all this marketing. I, I don't. And I was challenged by the Lord. He said, well, you have legs, right? So <laughs> I, knocked on, That's right. I, I knocked on 277 doors in my community with a flyer. And lo and behold, thank God, four deals later, a year and a half later, it's been proven We have to knock the T off of Kim. Whatever the obstacle, whatever the obstacle that is before us, we have to find a way to climb over it, go around it. And sometimes, Terry, the truth of the matter is we just have to walk through it. That's right. That builds the character. That builds the strength. You got to have strength (laughs) to fight the giants, don't you? You got to do it. You got to walk through it. I love that. It reminded me of Booker T. Washington, and, you know, paraphrasing here again, it's, it's not about all your successes that measures, it's, that measures it that you achieve, but it's how many times you get back up. Wow. How many times you get That's back right. up. Right? Right. It just does. Right. You know, and, and talking about when you said you filed bankruptcy, that's funny because I used to tell everyone, because people were so embarrassed from 2007 to probably 2013, you know, it's like people would hide and, you know, not talk to you. They'd act weird and stuff. And then, you know, it's like, why? Because they were embarrassed of that, you know, and it's like yeah. life happens to people. And I remember one time um, this attorney was, we were at a cocktail party and this attorney said, you know, you're not popular at this cocktail party if you hadn't filed bankruptcy or you're in a short sell. And everybody was just howling and laughing. <laughs> Because you know what, isn't that really about what life is about? People are ashamed to say something, but when you when people get that, like you're putting yourself in that box by not sharing, you know, you don't have to put your dirty laundry everywhere, but when you share with other people something that makes you feel like it holds you back, then you realize, you know what, this happened to a lot of people. I'm going to use this story to help other people, and it does help other people. Absolutely, I love that. Absolutely. Well, we're we're kind of winding down. Um, We're getting close to here five more minutes. So, so is there any, um, anything you'd like to say before we, we run, you know, in this, I just, I'm absolutely feel privileged that I got to interview you. I think you're an inspiration. You're a strong superpower girl woman. I like to say that. And, um, I just want everyone to know that Roz is going to be, you know, we're all going to be at the uh, Nexus conference for um, NARAB July 16th through the 19th. And I'll tell you guys, if you don't go, you're missing out. I know that Roz and I both believe that it changed my life when I went last year. It was one of those moments. And I know that when I was there, my life changed. And I know I watched other people's lives change as well. So I just want you guys to really, really Figure it out, like Roz said. If the money's a problem, find the money. Just like she did, she had two legs. God told her she had two legs, and she could walk those 277 houses. So you <laughs> figure out how to get there because you don't want to miss this. Right, Roz? That's right. That's absolutely right. I just want to leave a few 
few nuggets with you to take with you today. You know, no one can fulfill your potential except you. Awesome. No one can fulfill your potential except you. Unleash your power. Think big. Think out loud. Dream out loud. Live out loud. And just understand that greatness awaits those who are bold enough to make their dreams a reality. So, Terry, I just want to end, too, about NAWRB's uh, conference and some of the things we have going on. The Roaring 30 Awards. If you know of any woman uh, in your communities, in the business realm, that is admirable and have done a great work, maybe it's a nonprofit or maybe it's a a woman-owned business who's accomplished great strides, uh, or maybe it's a woman in the C-suite who have risen um, and, and broke through the, the, the glass ceiling, go to www.nawrb.com. That's www.nawrb.com. And search for the Roaring 30s Awards. Nominate a woman of your choice. And the deadline is fast approaching. I believe it's the end of the month, Terry. Is that right? It is, yeah. 30, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, that's all, right. all I Thanks have. All right, Awesome. Have a great day. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.